Hi, my name is David Bannon and I'm here at the 2018 Wolfram Technology Conference and I'm here to talk about computational thinking with the Wolfram language. What is computational thinking? Why would you do that? How do you go about doing it? If you're an educator, a researcher or working in an organization or just being a human being who wants to learn how to do things more efficiently and he live a little bit happier life. Check it out. My name is David Vanenen and among other things I'm an ambassador for the computational thinking initiatives and that's what I'll be talking about here today. Uh, so in this talk I'll be walking through briefly what is computational thinking, uh, why we would do that and how we could do go about doing that. And that's kind of sharing some resources uh, well, from language-related resources for educator researchers or uh, in, in if you are working in an, or part of any organization, actually. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so we'll be walking through a brief example of how one can do computational thinking in K-12 education. And at the end, I'm going to share some updates from Wolfram side of things and, and share some resources that hopefully you'll find helpful. So to warm up before this conference, how many of you have heard the term computational thinking? Okay, that's 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 good. It's more and more more hands showing up every time. That's 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 a nice thing. How many of you have not heard the term computational thinking? It's basically just uh, it's good to have some movement, like uh, equally for everyone. It's 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 been a long conference, so maybe a lot of sitting and coding. <clears throat> Sorry, my, my voice is a little down, so really let me know if, if you can't hear, hear what I'm saying. So the term itself, computational thinking, it's, it's quite recent. Uh, and as such, its definition is, has been and is still kind of evolving, and, uh, and uh, there's evolution to it. But there, so there are some entities or organizations that have defined it. So for instance, Google defines computational thinking as uh, uh, process of problem solving that includes a variety of things. But if you actually Google, the first hit you probably will get is Wikipedia's definition, that is uh, Janet Wing's definition, that computational thing is a thought process is involved in formulating a problem and expressing its solutions in such a way that a computer, human, or machine can effectively be carried out. Now there are more and more kind of uh, focus on, on the ideology of computational thinking and there are even centers built around it. Like Carnegie Mellon, they define computational thinking as a way of solving problems, designing systems and understanding human behavior, drawing, drawing concepts on computer science. But obviously the correct answer is given by Wolfram Alpha. So if you ask Wolfram Alpha what is computational thinking, it will tell you that computational thinking is the mental process of formulating concepts with enough clarity and in a systematic enough way that one can tell a computer how to do them. And kind of building up to well, from that definition that the computational thinking initiatives kind of more a conceptual way of uh, Computational thinking trains the mind to see the ways in which the special skills of ubiquitous modern computational devices can be harnessed to better understand the physical, social, intellectual, and cultural worlds we inhabit. Kind of a point to uh, make here is that uh, this definition indeed has kind of evolved and from kind of uh, solve problem, solving problems and formulating problems and expressing its solutions going kind of designing systems, understanding human behavior, and all the way harnessing these devices to better understand these physical, social, intellectual, and cultural worlds we inhabit. And I kind of like the, the Wolfram definition. It's, as it is kind of the most broad of this, and it really, really uh, focuses or kind of gives the idea how the whole ideology of a computational thinking can be really applied to, to literally in anything that we do. But so why are we doing it or why would we be doing it? And so one way to look at it is basically looking, for instance, at the, the, the estimated operational stock of industrial robots. So this plot is from International Federation of Robotics uh, showing thousands of units per year. And if we look at it, so basically we see that that number has been increasing uh, up to now and for better or worse, it will likely continue to do so. So by 2020, we'll have over 300, 3 million uh, operational industrial robots. When something is for better or worse, I tend to say, let's make it for better, shall we? Uh, and uh, here I can quote uh, 
BWC analysis this year on the impact of automation on jobs. We have to be looking at how we train our young people and reskill workers so they are ready to move into new roles that technology like AI will create, particularly emphasizing the importance of increased investment in lifelong learning and retraining. And this has huge impact on education and how we think about education and teaching and learning and, and, and work in general. So now just a brief example of how you could go about doing this. This particular uh, example is targeted for middle schoolers and middle school classes. Um, but the idea is kind of to give a, uh, in a, a concrete example how, how you could, uh, what this ideology kind of entails. So you can start by asking, for instance, something real uh, world application. How secure is my bike lock? And you can set it up, for instance, saying that your friend has forgotten the word she used for her bike lock. However, she remembers it is an English word. Would you be able to help unlock her bike? The way you can set it up in a classroom, for instance, is you can actually give these bike locks and, and, and let's say form pairs or groups and one of them will, will set up the lock and others try to, you know, different words to, to unlock that. And uh, after a while, you will come to realization that it is actually a non-trivial problem, highly non-trivial problem. And, and then you can start asking, so how we could go about it more systematically uh, and more efficiently. And now, this kind of depends now how you actually go about doing it. It depends on the background of, 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 uh, of the audience and of the educators, like how much they actually know, let's say, about programming, coding, Wolfram language, and so forth. For the sake of this, this example, we kind of, you, one way of this, let's say that we can show there are some functions, built-in functions in Wolfram language that, that can, can be helpful to address this. For instance, there's a thing like we knew that uh, she used an English word. So there is a um, function word list that will give you all the English words, about 40,000 of them. Uh, and then we can start forming, let's say, a computational version of the of the bike lock, uh, and just make basically make a string pattern where you have like this is a simple example where you have four dials and each dial has A B C D E. So the first letters would be here, then the second here, third here, and the fourth one here. And now, now you can think of the the uh, without having these computers and computational devices, what you would need to do is basically take a dictionary and go through all these 40,000 words, pick up the four letter words from there and, and the ones that can be formed and of those ones that can be formed from these combinations. That would be a quite a daunting task to do. And especially if a large classroom of kids and then you would have to have like many, many dictionaries and it would take a lot of time. But now we can basically do something like this that you can select from the word links strings that match that that pattern. And, and, and then you can press shift enter and you get those words. <clears throat> so this is kind of a simple example. So we had only a few, few letters uh, uh, to, uh, and, a, and a simple lock. But uh, kind of the idea is that what we got, what we basically used was three, three functions. Okay, you can calculate the length of that if you, if you want to. But we used three functions and, uh, and a few symbols and we got to do something really concrete and actually uh, had a, had a, like us would help solve a real world problem in, you know, or for problem that uh, that can be can be, that can happen for for these kids. But the, the the point here is that you don't have to basically stop here. Like that was a, like a, a small example, but you can use all the alphabets, and that's where like this idea of computational thinking and the power of computing and computers comes that. The, you, know, you don't have to be uh, just constrained to simple examples. Like here you can, with a little bit of extra effort, you can kind of build a more fancy uh, 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 bike lock where you have like eight dials, which all of them are all the, all the letters of the alphabet. So it's a big one, <laughs> but, uh, but basically you, ju you can then just use the same, same function and then you get all the possible combinations. And you, you will quickly see that this would be quite a daunting time to find all those all those words from a dictionary book, for instance. Uh, um, so that in this case, you had like 5,919 possibilities. Mm. And again, you don't have to even step uh, 
you don't have to stop there. You can use all. I'm originally from Finland, so we add a couple more uh, more letters there. And as a consequence, uh, quite surprisingly, so in English you have about 40,000 words, and in Finnish you have about 700,000 words. Uh, that's slightly, it's not entirely in the sense correct, because that includes all the, all the, uh, the, the, the different cases of the words too. But in the sense that you have a lot of different ways of expressing these things. But again, it, you can just do the same things. Uh, I'm going to have to look at it. And 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 just the uh, oh, it was calculating. What I was surprised. Oh, yeah, it, it, the reason why it took a little longer because it actually had to cover that seven hundred thousand instead of thirty thousand or forty thousand. Uh, anyway, but you will find a find a that in this case. Uh, let's see if it still remembers that. Anyway, anyway, you will find a. Uh, that, that, that you can apply it into any number of alphabets, any languages. Uh, uh, like you don't have to constrain to to uh, alphanumeric. Okay, this is still running. This is the one example of, of what happens when you use computational devices. They all don't always behave the way you would like them to, or or you would expect them to. And uh, and that's that's also okay. Like in the educational situation, you are running this class as a teacher, and you know something like this happens that, that there's a process that keeps uh, kind of uh, going. Then you know that's a, that's a thing that uh, that can happen in real life. And then as an educator, you need to kind of you know assess that situation. Um, and then basically, here are some opportunities uh, to. Wait if we get a response, and kind of this is also an opportunity for kids to kind of learn that okay, what what will you do when something like this happens? Uh, and the process is uh, so as an educator, you can kind of go through the steps, what is actually happening in the machine, uh, and the thing, different kinds of things that you you can do about it. Which in this case, there is if nothing else helps, you can kind of go through uh, control Alt Delta in the Windows machine and end that task. Um, that, so that's one way of, uh, of, of solving, solving this thing. And, and then you can kind of get up there and, and, and see uh, if you can get it up back there. <clears throat> but again, that's, a, that's an example of a, of a thing that can happen in a real world for educators, uh, that uh, things don't work with technology as they as you would like them to be, and it's an important step for for a teacher in a in a classroom to be confident about that and comfortable with that. Things don't always go the way you like, particularly when you are using uh, when you are coding things. Uh, and the kind of teach that's an educational moment for kids to learn learn about that and not to be frustrated and and get stuck with that. Anyway, so that was an example of uh, of, of what what how you would go could go about doing computational thing in, in a middle school classroom. Now, let's see, so that's, a, that's an example, an activity that kids can do in, in the classroom. And uh, let's see if uh, I can just say. Uh, so, and this particular example was from the computational thinking initiatives. Uh, and there is actually accessible online where we have a lesson plan actually structured around this. So it's not just having an empty notebook, but for the educators, there is kind of information to whom this is appropriate, how long you expect to do that, how it aligns uh, with the curriculum standards and what are the objectives and whatnot, and, and then kind of going through that process. <clears throat> but uh, so that's an activity to do. Another idea, idea I, that I find interesting is as uh, computational essays. And you can read more about uh, Stephen's ideas what is a computational essay from his blog. But that's really an opportunity. After you do an activity, it's an opportunity to kind of reflect on that activity for the student, but also it provides for the educators uh, 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 opportunity to actually assess and, uh, and form evaluation. So for instance, uh, how a computational essay for this bike lock could look like, uh, that you can actually really just kind of write down in words, what did you do in the activity, kind of describe what you had there, but then actually have that interactive content that, uh, that um, 
and that the user can or a teacher can then then play with and test it if it's, it works the way it should and in, in, in a sense you can also then um, like uh, integrate it into auto grading system and things like that and I think it's a very powerful way of, of both it's useful for the student to actually go to the reflection process and, and it can be for the educators useful for for assessing that so from the Wolfram side of things uh, uh, computational thinking initiative is, is kind of um, under the umbrella of Wolfram Foundation which is a non-profit arm of, uh, of Wolfram research and which has objective to support education research and entrepreneurship you know, under computational thinking initiatives, it's actually a set of initiatives. It comprises at the moment uh, computer-based math. It is mostly based in, in the UK and the team is based in the UK. And that's kind of a top-down approach. Like uh, they uh, interact with governments and try to integrate computational thinking curriculum in, into to be a core part in public education. Uh, and there is uh, one trial going on in, in Estonia right now and there is really really good some good good feedback coming from that another set of initiatives is uh, are these kind of uh, individual lesson plans that we just kind of went through and we call them ai adventures and this is a really an activity that the individual teacher can integrate into 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 the classroom and into what what they are doing so it can be a classroom activity or after school activity uh, however, it, it best suits the, the, the particular teacher or school. And AI League is an idea that uh, we have a continuous flow of these, these individual activities. So every week or every month, you, you, will, have, you, know, you will have throughout the school year uh, these type of activities. And AI Camp is uh, uh, an intensive, uh, it's, so it's in one week or in two weeks, the kids and educators can, can come together and, and do, do these activities. And the idea of uh, AI Arts and Science Fair is that uh, at the end of each year, uh, the students and the educators can kind of come together and, and showcase what they have done throughout the year. Now there's a new uh, initiative, uh, computationalthinking.org, which is kind of uh, uh, the portal to provide uh, resources to everyone. So it includes the educational aspect, but also goes beyond education to provide opportunities and resources uh, computational how to integrate computational thinking into government activities organizations and in in in, in, in industry sorry mm -hmm. uh, so some updates from the computational thinking so these are the grassroots efforts uh, so about ai adventures there are some publicly available now and so anyone anyone of you can just go there and and use them uh, you can either use it on in a cloud notebook or download on your on your machine and there are several under development and there's material available if you want to develop your own too uh, you can contact me or others at the cti um, uh, to, to 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 get additional material uh, there are annual camps uh, so there's a high school summer camp each year held since 2012 in waltham and for this year we had a first camp in australia too and there's a plan to do another one in a in, in spring 2019 uh, about leagues uh, so last year we had three leagues uh, this year we have 13 and the objective for next year would be kind of to triple that uh, so we're kind of we don't want to scale this up like exponentially before we actually you know have enough uh, understanding of what what is actually effective effective ways and for that we want to really focus on teacher training and professional development so that the, these educators can then themselves then have a, a ability to initiate these programs in their own own locations and kind of in the process we are also working on identifying and testing what metrics are, are best to measure uh, the, the um, computational thinking comprehension um, so first time this year in spring we had like actual professional development uh, event or serious events with with full set of uh, educators from uh, from covering four different time zones and if you're interested in that there's going to be next uh, in, in the spring so again you can contact me or uh, through the CTI website we also had like uh, these kind of educator roundtables which are webinars every couple of months which cover uh, topics like how to integrate this into your classroom and there are example from from educators that they tell how they are doing and it's kind of a roundtable thing and so there have been uh, this 
almost 400 students, 60 educators, and spent almost 6,000 hours in total so far. And again, we just want to next year kind of double it up and offer more opportunities throughout the, throughout the year. Yeah. So at the end, I want to kind of share some resources or how you could advance computational thinking. So if you're an educator, uh, you can again read Stephen's blog about how to integrate that. But uh, also you can then I encourage you to cr actually create this educate uh, content that is computable. So you can do it through the in K-12, through the CTI activities, let's say, getting these lesson plans and these different types of events. In, in a college and university level, there is a computational curriculum development platform, which has been developed by Kyle Keane at Wolfram and MIT. So that's uh, it's been used at MIT, uh, but it is an open source, so you can also use it in, in, in your activities. One simple way is, I think, I, I find it interesting, is that these challenges, which is also came out recently, and some snippets of things that you can kind of easily integrate into, into your teaching activities. And also then you can share opportunities that are offered directly for the students, like Wolfram Student Certification Mentorship and Ambassador Program. So now, uh, if you're a researcher, Again, I would uh, encourage you to actually create these kind of interactive, computable uh, publications. Uh, and um, so instead of having these static static PDF files or, or, or whatnot, you would actually have uh, content that is accessible by people and that itself uh, helps uh, advance computational thinking. And, and I encourage uh, researchers par particularly engage the public in their research. So do citizen science projects and in, in a way that they are also integrating these ideologies. And just uh, a couple of words about it. In, in, in or any organization, if you're in a management position, position or an employee, basically these computational thinking skills are kind of a core that will help improve your organization. In, 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 in general, you can, you'll be these people will be who have these skills, they are able to handle complexities and identify relevant concepts, craft useful, interesting questions, come up with creative new solutions and, and, and communicate them effectively with each other. And one way, practical way would be, let's say, using these demonstrations. If you have a meeting and you need to present something, make a demonstration, interactive demonstration about it. You can share it with the team beforehand and, and showcase it in a meeting. It's one simple way of integrating it, like that you can do right away. Mm -hmm. So finally, <clears throat> now we can, uh, how you can actually get it out there. We have now notebookarchive.org, uh, which, which you can actually make that content accessible to everyone, which is really neat. And you can also become a certified in these things through, through Wolfram and Wolfram Foundation. You can become certified computational educator, essentially, uh, or become an instructor if you want to learn. That's a good way of, if you're not uh, entirely comfortable with the Wolfram language, that's a good way of also kind of becoming very, very comfortable with it if you, you get certified in that. And my time is running out. But uh, one way is uh, so you can become data creator or a community ambassador like, like I am. So. You get to give talks in conferences like this, meet wonderful, interesting people. The last slide is basically, uh, I've given here some resources that you may find uh, helpful from uh, the introduction to Wolfram Lamy, it's Wolfram University. It's a MOOC type thing, basically, where it covers all the topics that has covered in, the, in this conference. I really want to emphasize the uh, Wolfram Summer School. I went there myself last year and was an instructor this year. And it's if you really want to uh, address a, a work on a problem or project that you have in mind, this is a really good place. In three weeks, you can kind of focus on that uh, in an environment which is very inspiring and, and it's, it's, it's fun to be with. And it's well from community where you can ask and, and answer questions. And I have collected some resources in this website you can, you can go to if you find it useful. So I'd like to conclude this talk and uh, in fact, in this conference, at least in this room, by quoting uh, the Wolfram brothers. So what comes to computational thinking, the magic is in optimizing how process, computer, and human can be put together to solve increasingly tough problems. And computation think thinking will be a defining feature of the future, and children need to learn it now and in to, to ensure success later on. Uh, and I would just like to kind of add that to children of all ages, uh, I, I think it will be very important and, and and uh, a part of uh, each one of our, our today and, and the future. Thank you.